Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org. I'm joined with David Floyer and Stu Miniman, also both with, with Wikibon. Um, this is it for uh, us. We're going to wrap right now. Uh, I love this segment, you guys, because uh, we've had the Kool-Aid injection, you know, two days of Kool-Aid right into the main line vein, and now we get to sit back and say, okay, what did we learn? What do we think? How does it stack up? So... Um, David, let me start with you. This is the first time on the Cube in these two days. We've been packed with just fantastic guests. Uh, you've been roaming the halls, talking to people, geeking out, listening to the software-defined, you know, meme. What'd you learn here? Uh, a, a number of things. The one thing that I'd like to focus on first is uh, the emphasis and the quiet confidence uh, at reducing the cost of operational cost, the the infrastructure cost of managing. Uh, systems in general. Um, they, the the, the uh, tagline for, for it is p the pure systems. Uh, they're putting together an increasing number of these pure systems which are uh, really looking at the, the, the system from beginning to end. What are the costs all the way through? And for example, trying to take out the costs of having to put in new sets of software for ev everything and tie them all together. So putting in versions of uh, operating systems, versions of uh, microcode on the server, on the storage, on the application itself, tying the lot together. So taking out more and more of that really unnecessary, unproductive work from the whole of the operational and life cycle of, uh, of the products what's, themselves. What's enabled that, David? I mean, we, we know, we've known this is a problem for a decade, you know, more. Why all of a sudden now uh, is IBM and others, frankly, and, and others, to, yes. to uh, yeah. attack mm. that problem? What's what's changed to enable that? I I, I think that uh, what's changed is that the the technologies themselves are becoming actually pretty similar. Um, when you look at the flash architectures uh, out there, they're not. They're a little bit different, but they're not that different. And the spinning disk is going away, obviously, slowly, um, but it's still the same. And processors are processors are processors. You know, you can vary a little bit about uh, the type of memory you have and how many cores you have, but it's, there is a, a degree of similarity in systems going in, in, in the, open, the open systems going in. So what you're left with is, okay, we've got to package them better, we've got to make them relevant to a particular application so they're working more closely with the ISVs themselves and and I think that is the next big slice that can be taken off there isn't so much you can take off uh, the storage itself or the uh, the chips it's you're, you're down to uh, the cost of the chips so it's, it's the cost of all the stuff around it and um, uh, I think the because of that uh, similarity of the technologies now that the lack of differentiation the differentiation has got to come in the services they put around it okay so you like the system view um, no surprise that IBM's got got a knack for that Stu, what, what, what's the highlight for you of uh, Edge? Yeah, so uh, the two things that I, I spent a lot of time looking at this week. Uh, first, of course, if you look at the converged infrastructure, pure systems. Um, you know, Dave, we've really seen that uh, th this is a complex solution. It's not only just architecting the technology, but it's getting the, the go-to-market right. It's getting uh, the customers on board. And uh, pure systems has made progress. They still have some software work to do, some channel work to do. Um, I, I've heard while they have have lots of flexibility and they have a phenomenal ISV ecosystem putting together all of the different pieces. I heard from uh, some channel people that said, well, yeah, the customer can get whatever they want, but I can't necessarily sell this piece of it and getting credit for it is something they need to sort out. Um, so, um, you know, we, we, we talked to people here on the Cube that were saying they're having, you know, uh, it, 
lots of adoption in uh, the emerging markets, you know, China and Africa and the like. Um, but, you know, I don't think they're necessarily, you know, beating the other convergence players out there right now head to head. Um, but IBM sorting that out. And the second one is, uh, you know, really just IBM software breadth. Uh, when I talk to the, you know, software define, uh, you know, group there, uh, they've got so many different software products from DB2 uh, through all the different apps and, the, you know, the full suite of compute, network, and storage. So they're going to do some kind of, you know, SDN, they've got, you know, some really smart people who aren't going on it. Uh, their software defined storage strategy is, is really emerging out here. Uh, you know, IBM just has such breadth and such, uh, you know, uh, brain power and knowledge out there that they're, they're forced to be reckoned with when they put their, uh, you know, weight behind the arrow. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, the whole software defined thing is, is, is a, was a highlight of this event, but specifically the open source mojo that IBM was emphasizing. I mean, I would think they love this whole you know, discussion about software defined. When you think of it from a storage standpoint, you know, IBM, HP, EMC, NetApp, Hitachi, you know, who's got more software than anybody there? It's IBM, no question. Now, of course, EMC has VMware. They know a little bit about software, but IBM is a leader in software. Um, and so the world going into a software defined approach is very good news for IBM, and IBM has chosen to compete on the basis of open source. What I liked about what I heard this week is um, it wasn't a me too to what EMC, EMC did an awesome job of, of announcing Viper. It was just very impressive what they put forth and the vision that they put forth and the excitement that they created. But IBM didn't just do a me too. Uh, they said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna leverage SVC, fair enough. We're gonna you know, abstract the hardware, we can do that, check. Uh, but we're gonna really focus on the notion of open source as a competitive differentiator. We know that game. Uh, we know that game probably better than anybody else in the enterprise. I'm trying to think of, does anybody know uh, open source better than IBM? Any of the whales? No, IBM's the number one there. So we're going to make that the competitive differentiator. Um, now, does open source, is that a defining attribute of software-defined storage? No. You can have proprietary software-defined storage, but the fact that IBM's choosing to compete on open source says a couple of things to me. One, it's got a long-term vision. Two, it wants to collaborate with the industry. It realizes it can't do you know, everything on its own. And three, it's done this before. It's done it with Linux uh, and you know, it has a good street cred there. So David, um, this, the definition of software defined is continuing to evolve. IBM actually says there's some dis dissonance between what, right Stu, between what they see as software defined and what we are seeing with software defined, they, I think we're saying that they like the IDC taxonomy a little better, but of course I'm going to say we like the Wikibon taxonomy better. <laughs> I'm not sure where that dissonance is, Stu, and I don't know if you have an opinion on that. But David, what are your thoughts on the whole software defined piece and IBM's ability to participate there in earnest? Put, that, put forth a good vision, you know, but you know, let's squint through that vision and talk so, about it. So if you, if you look at the uh, IBM's history with Linux, they, they put the wood behind the arrow with Linux. They put really uh, a, a lot of code into the Linux space. They made that work. They made, effectively made Linux the pr uh, premier uh, web-based um, operating system. Uh, and they drove, they drove out uh, um, Microsoft from that, from that place. Uh, so that's a that's a pretty good uh, track record, um, and if you're looking at from the server point of view at the larger server installations, which is where they drove them out from, then uh, they've got a pretty good track record. And putting the wood behind OpenStack in particular, uh, saying okay, they're going to help contribute to that. They're one of the major contributors contributors already to OpenStack. Uh, was it 150 people that they have uh, contributing to that? Um, if they continue to contribute in that way, then they will use the, the, the very rich layers of software that they have brought from a point of view of development software, from a point of view of management software, to good effect as uh, supplemental to a fundamental architecture. And uh, I think that's a, a, that's a, a, a good strategy. I, I think that the definition of how it's going to evolve is, 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 is not the, the point. The point is that you're going to have a set of software uh, 
frameworks, environments. Uh, they're going to be standard APIs uh, that are going to be used by a lot of people uh, to put in their systems, put in their, their orchestration, put in their management of that. And that's, that's the way it's going to go. Uh, and I think if, if, if uh, that'll be, a, there'll be an, uh, an open stack, there'll be a VMware, there'll be a couple more. Um, but uh, pick your flavor. Pick your flavor, and and uh, and, and it'll be a success. So, so we had uh, Stu and I had uh, Eva Helen on. She's the president of Symbolic. You know, com- you know Symbolic. They're doing sure. some interesting stuff, um, and their claim to fame is they've got this robust storage management stack. Now all the big guys are out. Now they're masters. The whales are freezing the market. Um, and I asked her. And she wasn't committal because you know we're on live TV, and she really maybe didn't know or couldn't comment or didn't want to comment. But I'll ask you, put you on the spot. So I said, okay, you've been developing this stack for over a decade, um, full storage management, volume management, you know, data management stack. Somebody said to me the other day, it's not going to take a decade, Dave, to build that out, um, and and uh, because today's modern tools will allow you to do that faster, and some of these whales can throw more resources at it. Uh, and then somebody else said to me, yeah, but, you know, if that's all you have to do is a blank sheet of paper, you know, maybe, but you got to do all this other stuff, all this other integration. Um, what's your take? When you, t- when you take a company like Symbolic or other guys like them who have a full-blown software-defined storage management stack built out, and then you got EMC Viper, you got IBM with SVC, you got, you know, VMware, HP doing its yeah. thing, VMware. All well, sort of HP's mainly with, uh, with, with OpenStack, yeah. And OpenStack, right. Yeah. But not, but, you know, not starting from scratch, nope. but, but not 10 years mature either. Um, can they close that gap in a, in a year or two, or is it going to take longer? It's people like Symbolic, you mean? No, or people like EMC with Viper, EMC, IBM, uh, and others. Uh, uh, I, I, I think that the closed system is going to be tough. Uh, I think that Viper is going to, they're going to be part of OpenStack, they'll get little pieces of it, but trying to create a whole orchestration layer where they're leading it, uh, I think is a tough road for them to haul. Um, obviously, they, they own a lot of, soft, of, of storage software, so in that particular area, they may have some things that they can take out of that but orchestration is beyond just storage the orchestration has to be from a system level in my view so it has to be software led from a system point of view from an application point of view so so I have to say see we're talking about OpenStack before right Um, so I'm on the github looking at the top change set contributors by employer you know who number one is for for uh, uh, OpenStack Grizzly and Cinder Red Hat Good guess. It's, no, uh, number Solid one is SolidFire. Solid, yeah, now they only have one or two contributors, but so interesting enough. But then of course HP, IBM, Intel, Red Hat, NetApp, Rackspace, Citrix are all up there, and then EMC. So it's it's, it's going to be interesting to watch this leaderboard, yes. yeah. right? I mean, yeah. uh, Stu, what's your take on the whole OpenStack thing? Yeah, uh, you know, it. I, I really like the message that Ambush has that you know IBM is going to look to out execute the market, not to control the market. Um, so you know, OpenStack is, is interesting. Of course, IBM just is, has a soft layer a- acquisition to kind of counterbalance uh, that solution. Uh, you know the, uh, you know, IBM is uh, real involved in open daylight. Uh, you know, there were probably Cisco and IBM are the the two pushing that to help SDN mature. Or the controller's going to have out. traction too. Um, it, it's really early, so uh, the, the the code is now available for the controller. Uh, we saw just last week Big Switch kind of pulled back from that a little bit, um, and uh, you know, I, I have to say that uh, I'm. I have limited hope for how far Open Daylight can really go. Um, I f- think having an industry standard controller is, is a good start, but uh, if the the, uh, the project really can't get those northbound APIs set so that we can put any application on top of it, uh, you know, I'll see it as a failure. Um, but hopefully they can drive that. IBM is definitely committed to work on that, and you see IBM, you know, having lots of people committed to code. Um, we had, you know, the head of the STG group talking about, you know, how many Linux centers they have around the world and how many contributors they have. So, you know, this isn't just lip service. IBM puts a lot of resources uh, behind 
uh, what they're doing in open source. Uh, I think we heard it across lots of the guests. Uh, the only thing we probably talked about more uh, on theCUBE this week was Flash. Um, it was really strong commitment and really t integrated into every piece uh, of what they said. It reminded me of the, the HP's analyst event earlier this year where you heard about how convergence and that blurring between server and storage uh, you know, went there. So when you hear kind of that common messaging throughout, it, it kind of resonates. So Flash. Uh, so is let's talk about Flash. Um, yeah. IBM, you know, big move buying buying TMS. Bigger move, maybe uh, combined. We're investing a billion dollars. So IBM's kind of pretty clear where they're going. EMC, Extreme IO. We saw at EMC World what their strategy is. Directed availability. They're kind of slow rolling it, getting that right. But we all agree they're going to do some serious damage in that market space. HP today announced an all flash three power array. Right? Right. Looking really good. We're going to, you know, dig, dig into Dell that, unpack a little bit. Week, so. Dell did the same last mm -hmm. week. So, all the major companies now, I guess with the exception of so, Oracle, but even in the case of Oracle, you know, with their hybrid strategy, oh, Net NetApp has have laid has out, sold, and then NetApp so, has, has, has sold, still, yeah. well, I mean, they've announced sort of a direction. Yes. Right? yes. Flash Ray, yeah. right? Yeah. Flash right. Ray. Yeah. So, yeah. there's maybe some acquisitions that still could be made. You know, uh, some of our guests here predicted that. But let's talk specifically about what IBM is doing. IBM is basically saying, look, we're either looking for the classic TMS sale, which is the application doing the storage management, we'll drop in TMS, stack light, or we're going to put it behind an SVC. Now, we got wind that, as well, IBM is going to extract that SVC stack and ultimately layer it on top of you know, TMS or flash systems now. Yes. No, that's good strategy. Yeah. So you clearly IBM is going to do some damage there. So, so what's your take, uh, David? We'll start with you, and then we'll have Stu chime in. So um, uh, I was uh, I, I uh, uh, moderated two panels with uh, six uh, six customers on, and the one thing that all of them were enthusiastic about was flash. And, and even though I was giving a panel on Storewise, they all, uh, with, with one exception out of the three, they, they all were focusing on the importance of Flash, um, how more Flash was helping them, how the middle range of, of storage was, was really not, not particularly important anymore. Um, so, uh, and they were, Putting these flashes behind the Storewise 7, V7000, and they were putting it behind SVC. Um, they are very, very comfortable with doing that. The, the strategy out there. 100 uh, microseconds wasn't bugging them. Uh, yeah, sure. 100 microseconds was overhead was yes. not a problem. It right? wasn't. We had Eric Eidberg yeah. on, and he, he yeah. shared with us that those stats. And you know when IBM says that, it's legit. You know, they're yeah. not like making yeah. stuff up. Yeah. Uh, so, so they were very comfortable indeed with that strategy. Uh, it gave them a way of moving the stuff around easily. And the SVC is probably one of the, not probably, is, is the best virtualization platform that there is out there. Uh, the the largest best uh, is because it's most robust. It's got the most, uh, most customers. Uh, 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 customers. Most it's got the most um, uh, support. Functionality. And support for support, third party yes. products or not. So they were able to put take the uh, Texas memory system and just put it behind there, and automatically it had that stack, and they could automatically move stuff. Now, uh, obviously, HP have done the same thing with 3PAR, and uh, Dell have done the same thing with the uh, compellent, the fluid systems. Uh, so that there are the same strategies, and H H Hitachi also have the same uh, idea of putting a flash-only module uh, on top of their um, uh, VSP. So all of these uh, different strategies are coming out, but if you look at the quality of the virtualization, the quality of the stack, the ability to manage it, and all of the customers were using the V7000 to manage other storage, and a lot of it. Um, it's an it's a, it's a, a, an end-to-end -end strategy. It's more than just a flash strategy. It's an end-to-end -end strategy where they can take the pieces they want and, and dial it up, dial it down across that uh, virtualized environment. I, I was very impressed and the, and the customers were very enthusiastic. And Stu, uh, Stu, yeah, I, I agree. I did a panel in, in, in April with a bunch of IBM customers and very straightforward. I mean, yeah. It wasn't like, you know, yeah. mind-blowing like when you talk to Fusion IO customers and you go, oh my God, that's an unreal, right? And the hyperscale guys. But very straightforward and Absolutely. practical. Stu, yeah. you talked to a lot of flash companies and 
customers using Flash, and what's your what's your angle on all yeah, this? Yeah, so uh, you know, it, there's there's a good vibe about Flash at this show. I've talked to the customers, I've talked to the partners, and they have a good understanding of where it fits. Um, you know, I, I think we can agree. You know, IBM wasn't first to market with this, but they were very deliberate as to how they did it. Very thoughtful, put good solutions together. They've got a nice portfolio that brings it all together. So you know, IBM now has a good good story. Uh, doesn't look like they have any you know major gaps uh, into what they're offering there, uh, and uh, you know they're bringing those real solutions uh, to market. So, you know, TMS ha has, you know, those point deployments, you know, all flash arrays are not for every environment today, um, but, th you know, they know, uh, I, I forget which guest it was that said, you know, we can do an analysis and we'll know, you know, 99% guaranteed that, you know, you're going to get huge benefits when you put this in. So, uh, they do, you know, the TCO and the ROIs really well. Um, they had some data as to how they're uh, solving, uh, you know, some of the database uh, challenges out there. There, uh, which you know matches a lot of David Floyer's research there. So, um, you know, good information, uh, good solid deployments, and uh, you know, IBM's definitely uh, you know a, a stronger player in Flash than maybe they are in the overall storage market. So, so let's sort of up level it around around storage for a minute because um, I'd say in the last five years that we've been watching this, maybe six years even now, um, we've pretty much seen the big whales pull in companies where they have to maintain their positions. Yeah, you saw, you know, Oracle made a big move when it bought Sun. That sort of changed the landscape a little bit, but not dramatically. I mean, at the end of the day, you still get these guys, you know, IBM sort of hanging onto a chair, maybe losing a little share, maybe bumping up in a, in a quarter, you know, HP sort of same thing. The old stuff's declining, the new stuff's coming on, both of those companies in transition, EMC kind of hanging on to its, its leadership position. So it's kind of been, you know, the rich get richer hmm. sort of thing, picking up companies along the way. Um, is software-defined storage, this whole open source theme, you know, Ambush Goyal's vision, is that, a, is that truly a tipping point? Are we going to see a change in the storage landscape? Who wins, who loses? I, in my view, uh, the, the biggest impact of software-led uh, storage, uh, software-defined storage, is going to be the commoditization of products. Um, uh, there will be far fewer uh, alternatives out there. It's just, I think, an inevitable result of that. That the servers are getting, you know, this Intel, and unless they do something really stupid and, and lose out to ARM by, by not covering the lower, lower part of the market, uh, they've made a number of moves recently to block that off, and I think that's, apart from the price, that's, that's a good strategy they've put in place there. Uh, it's going to be an Intel environment. Uh, that's that's who owns the market in, in servers. The storage is, is becoming part of that overall software-led infrastructure, much more closely defined with the servers. A lot of the flash is going to go up into the servers. So you're, you're going to see a set of uh, functionality in moving that data backwards and forwards between the servers and the storage, uh, put itself into these platforms, and the the the, the opportunity for true innovation is is I think uh, having having gone through a period of time where there's been a lot of investment is actually going to come down, uh, and the emphasis will go away from the the platform to the IS, ISVs people who will take those platforms, rewrite applications, taking advantage of the phenomenal improvements in, in, in systems so, capabilities. So that says guys with robust APIs and open source mojo yep. win. And the exactly. guys who know how to market to ISVs. Absolutely. So that says EMC largely has to reinvent itself. If well, it's got the VMware the side of things, so it, That's it true. can use that. Yeah, okay, uh, so it can leverage so it, VMware, yeah. so VMware yeah. basically becomes you know, yeah. the, the flagship. The right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, all right, great. And and IBM clearly has mm -hmm. has put forth that strategy. You know, only four percent of HP's hundred and twenty billion is software. So we got to see. You know, what 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 they're going to come up with. NetApp actually has inherently a, a good storage services Excellent. story. Absolutely. You know, maybe yeah. the best from an architectural standpoint because yeah. it's simple. You know, and now you know with new announcements today on ONTAP 8.2, but but does it have the software juice? 
right. uh, uh, yes, does it does it have the ability to scale that uh, uh, scale out architecture? Does does it have the capability of really making sure that things can be large things can be put onto it safely? Right, and Oracle probably doesn't really care to participate in the industry that way. It just wants to sort of d dominate the red stack. Yep. And uh, what are we missing? Dell, no. Yeah. Good solution for small, mid-sized business. It's, it's right. They, yeah. they they've got a good solution at the bottom end. Okay, and they'll, and, they'll, and, they'll and do okay. In Hitachi, you know, okay, they'll continue to plot along, do their thing, and, and uh, they'll make more money on selling the uh, the uh, SSD, the, uh, the, the the component, the, the components itself? there. They they make some really good components there, as usual. Yeah. Okay. So that's you know they're really sort of we'll see, but but they're one of the big four or five or five or six anyway. But um, so what? Nothing changes five years from now. Same sort of landscape. I, 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 I have a feeling that at the moment you've got a lot of other software uh, flash-only vendors out there. You've got uh, Solidify. You've got uh, Pure Systems. You've got uh, Pure Storage. I mean, Violin. You've got yeah. Violin. You've got you've got uh, Fusion IO. You've Fusion got just got into the mix, you, right? You've got uh, uh, half a dozen of those the Calamaro. You've got half a dozen, more than that. Ten of those storage vendors with a lot of actually they've gained market share yeah. uh, in that area no doubt about it yeah, and of they're course, all, yeah. all, all doing well it's 20 million it's here it's 30 yep. million here some yep. of them are doing 100 million that yep. adds up it all adds up yeah. so the question is what's going to happen to to those players uh, as things well they're going to consolidate up. right and they're exactly gonna, they're going to yes. get bought up some of them are going to die some of them the ipo and maybe they'll yeah. get bought up eventually eventually and and maybe there's another generation of flash to come out but uh, but it, it, and if you look at the server market I mean, from the server point of view, the num numbers have been flat, etc. But when you look at the winner, the winner has been the people who are making the white boxes uh, for Google and everybody else. Their market share has gone through the roof, and that's my view of what's going to happen. In so, but IBM bought, basically, you know, acquired its way into the analytics business, and now is a powerhouse yep. in Software. analytics. Is yeah. going to do the same thing in storage? Will Will IBM get its storage mojo back by, as Ambush Goyal says? getting rid of the notion of storage as a box, storage as a container, and changing it to data as a platform. You know. Software on top of, yeah. of it. Does um, IBM regain yeah. its storage mojo? Yes or no? I, IBM gains in terms of the orchestration layer and the layers above storage and the layers connecting the applications to the storage. So yes, they do effectively win there by and owning it's, that. It's kind of not a coincidence, Stu, that, that, that there's only one pure play large storage company left and well, that's NetApp. It, it's funny, you go back and you, you say, you know, what is kind of convergence in this move to software and it, it's turning into a systems again and, and who knows systems? We go back to the old days of the mainframe. I mean, you know, this is, it's all coming full circle, right, right towards IBM's wheelhouse. All right, good. Stu, David, thank you very much. Uh, I think that's a wrap. Uh, it, second year of Edge, you know, good, good job. I think um, major progress, right? Doubled in size, going from well, Orlando to Vegas. Yeah. Good move. Um, next year, uh, Edge is in May, market calendars. Moving over to the Venetian, another good move. Expecting further growth. Uh, love the fact that it was not just a pure storage show. You had uh, we had Tom Rosamilia on, who was fantastic. Um, we had you know plenty of folks from the uh, the uh, division or business unit formerly known as Tivoli, <laughs> and uh, to steal a phrase from Prince, and um, expecting good things. I, I, I love the fact that IBM is shaking up the conversation. I think it's uh, clearly relevant in that conversation. So I think that's a big takeaway from this event. Uh, this is the Cube. We really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, thanks so much for the crew. Uh, Mick did a great job. Kenny, Andre, you know, folks back in Dallas, uh, all the guys blogging. Bert Lattimore was walking around today, dying to hear what he uh, what he learned at this event. So uh, I've been brought him here as a uh, as a blogger. So he's been writing ferociously. So thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, this is the Cube. Uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow. We'll be live at uh, at HP Discover. So please watch at SiliconAngle.com. Thanks everybody for watching. Been a great audience. Appreciate all the tweets. We'll see you next time.